Hi everyone, I'm uh, going to work today on this uh, 240 grams uh, paper. It's already cut to size to a frame I have because I know what I'm going to do is going into a frame. Now uh, we are going to use a lot of baby wipe today. What I'm going to, to do is I want to start by applying gesso to this uh, paper because I want the paint that will come uh, on top to move uh, and blend and I don't want it to soak into my paper. Now a nice trick with gesso is when you don't want to see any brush uh, strokes because uh, no matter how soft the brush you're using with the gesso there will always be some brush strokes and not uh, and it doesn't even matter what kind of paint you are using on top if it's even ink you will see the brush strokes and when i don't want to see any brush strokes i'm taking a gesso with baby wipe and just moving over the page in circular motion and like trying to insert the gesso into my paper I'm coating it and also I don't know I'm putting a little bit of pressure and I'm not uh, even sure if that's what's doing it I just know that it works for me and then I can achieve the kind of uh, background that I want without the, any harsh lines and I'm putting a little bit more just to make sure I have nice coverage here we go so this needs to uh, dry I'm putting this aside I've got here several acrylic paints I've got some light turquoise this is a grasshopper green deco art this is something from my cheap store some magenta this is also from the cheap store this and I've got here a buttercream and this one was something by deco art let's see a squash blossom so it really doesn't matter I just put some uh, colors that I thought would be a uh, nice for the background I'm basically I'm going to play with them and again using a baby wipe I'm folding it so I will have a better uh, hold of uh, on it and I'm just uh, starting by taking a little bit of paint and as I said playing and I'm going with circular motions again don't know why I just think it will be a uh, nice to build the background th this way not so sure now I'm folding it uh, another way and taking some of the yellow and now a little bit of this squash <laughs> paint too much here wiping it out and again trying to find a clean corner I'm also overlapping I think it gives me more uh, colors when they are overlap and 
basically this is just plain so I started with uh, circles and ended up <laughs> with <laughs> a just smearing the paint where I think it's needed and yeah this is the beginning of my background this needs to be uh, dried completely this is going for my wipeout excess paint and uh, notebook because we don't waste anything and I'm going to show you what I'm doing because there is always someone who's saying that it doesn't uh, go uh, as <laughs> it that don't have a uh, painty papers as nice as me and it's really not the case I'm just smearing wherever like so it really doesn't matter and you can use a brush and you can use a brayer and whatever you want to use it you can it, as long as you are playing it will work and I can take a brayer and my uh, my page is not straight so but look how nice this is turning out to be and I'm not even trying painty paper to start working with so moving this aside <laughs> moving everything aside and here's the background that needs it's still wet so I'll be back I'm back so now I want to go all over my background with this stencil and uh, this is a kind that has a little bit of adhesive and I don't like it uh, so what I'm doing I'm always uh, sticking it to some kind of fabric and only then I'm uh, applying it to whatever surface I'm working on now I want to go all over my page with this and I'm going to use makeup sponge with the gesso I have left here and I'm hoping that it will be um, I don't want really white I just want it um, a little bit translucent and I think that's the best explanation <laughs> and I I hope it's working let's see peeling it yeah it does work so I'm going to continue I can I can see uh, that I can even apply a little bit more just not completely cover it with white and because I'm planning on a larger circle uh, that will come on top of it and they are going to be more white so I need this to be uh, semi transparent in the background like this so just continuing doing the same thing yeah it's coming out quite nice
I don't really uh, uh, care uh, how accurate the pattern is. I just need all these lovely circles in my background. I'll add just a little bit more in several places that it didn't take so well like here and a little bit here really doesn't matter So I'm going to give this a quick blast before I'm continuing and I'll be back. I'm back. This is dry and now it's time for some stamping. I've got this uh, stamp set of all kinds of leaf with, that looks like skeleton leaves and I've got this and I'm going to play this is uh, again I'm still building my background and I've got some ink pads here and th these two are something that I've picked up uh, in Prague and they are not intense but uh, that's what I like about them because then I can add to the background something like a like a ghost print or something that it builds uh, the depth of the page so I'm going to take uh, this leaf and sometimes it really you can hardly see it but in the overall uh, thing it, it does show it does uh, add something so that's how I'm working <laughs> and I'm always going fr from uh, lighter to darker and building my page this way here is this one is darker than the next uh, the first I have used and as I said this is going to build my page and the interest in the background going to change and let's take this one and this one is from Stamperia the ink pad So as I said, building a background, lots and lots of details, that's how I like it. And now I want some handwritten text in the background. I'm going to use this one. When I've got large uh, stamps like this one, I just leave it on the acetate and I don't bother to take it out. try this is a cracked pistachio a Tim Holtz distress ink and I'm going to do only the tip of uh, this and see 
see that it's not overwhelming my page yeah adding details where I think it's needed yeah and 12 let's take just one more <laughs> leaf and now I'm using broken china Stamping done. Now I want the circles I've uh, talked about, and I'm going to take some stencil with circles. And let's see this one. And I'm thinking I'm going back to the gesso, and I will just need to apply a thicker. In layer so I will uh, have more coverage and that it will show as white and not as uh, what I've done here so I'm starting with this one can even go like this yeah that's better and a smaller one here not trying even to and be accurate about it if I think I need more I just add like this and Maybe one more here. This is quite random. I didn't plan on it. I'm just playing. <laughs> This needs to be completely dry, the ink, the, the this uh, circles, and I think I need just a little bit more gesso here. So I'm just putting here, yeah, and just a little bit more here. Yeah, this is it. Now I'm going to let it dry and I'll come back. I'm back. This is dry and now I want to use the dandelions from uh, this uh, stamp set. And let's see. I'm taking this one. I'm using Wilted Violet uh, Distress Ink uh, by Tim Holtz. And just so it will be easier. Yeah, and also here, switching to the smaller one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
here and let's see I've got this little bitty one No, oh, I'm just playing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. And last but not least. I want some fairies. They need to play. Let's see. I'm thinking that maybe I will need something darker for the fairies because I want them to stand out more. Yeah. So let's try. Okay, I've got this a uh, nautical blue by Momento, and I'll try it first on this. Mm, no, not dark enough. So I'll just switch to black. Tuxedo black by Momento. One fairy here, and let's see. Another fairy. Here. <laughs> Lots and lots of fairies. Let's see. Just, I want one more and no. Switching to another one, let's see. to make uh, some of this uh, dandelions a little bit more prominent so I'm going to stamp them again the uh, <coughs> sorry this uh, purple is not enough for me so I'm just going to do the same thing with the black and I even think that it will give it a little bit more I'm going sideways I'm not trying to do it a uh, on the same place yeah I think it, it gives it a a more a 3d look like this switching again a little bit down and to the side and where is the smaller one here it 
Jeez. Yeah, and almost missed this one and this one. Yeah, oh, I like it. Now I just want a to darken the edges, and I'm thinking with this purple, I don't want a um, the the black i think it will be too harsh so just going like this with a makeup sponge i'm going in a, li a little bit not only on the edges especially corners that's how i like to make this stuff When you've got a lot of uh, the ink on the makeup sponge, do the edges. When you uh, almost have none, then you can go inside and it gives you a faded look without any harsh lines. That's what I'm doing now when I don't have enough ink. Here it is. That's my page that I really, really like. And let's see. Another one going as a gift. So let's just put my name on it. I want to see how it looks <laughs> in the frame. <laughs> I had here the paper that I started to work with on the paper that came with the frame. It's just easier. I don't have to measure. I just adhere it and this is it. There it goes. Now it's giving me trouble. <laughs> okay. Almost. Really? Here it is. Everything is in place. Ta-da! I really enjoyed making this I hope you also and that you will play and lots of, and lots of baby wipe here so thank you for watching and thank you for leaving me comments below I'll be seeing you in my next video bye for now